road trip to Evra. Landing in Merida. So it's a two part trip. Thanks to my dad getting his car, Yay. we now have the freedom to move about Europe. So, um, yeah, today we're in Evra, and behind us you'll see the Temple of Diana. There are many things to see here, and a few hours is not sufficient, so we're just gonna hit some high points and then maybe on the way back try again. Yes, so we're scoping it out for, we will do an episode solely in Evra on another day, but we're just checking it out. We thought we'd give you a little glimpse of the start of our road trip, yeah. our first road trip. And I just gotta say, one of the things that I love about being here in Portugal is when you ask a local person, so I wanna travel here, what should I do? The pride and the joy of their country is so vibrant. Um, last night I mentioned to one of our friends that we were going to Evora, and he, he said, um, oh, okay, I have some ideas for you. And he has sent us so many cool things, places to eat, visit, you know, visit and, and places to shop and things like that. But it's just so true. Everywhere we go here, people are just so proud of their country and they have so much to be proud of. So, um, right. man, we're, we're having fun. Yeah, so we, we have plenty to show um, thanks to all the advice from all of our friends and of course this beautiful country. Good morning and welcome to Merida, España. We are super excited to be here and explore the Roman ruins and all kinds of things. We are presently at a really lovely Airbnb. We rested up last night after our beautiful drive. Um, and our Airbnb is right here on the map. We have all these Roman ruins that we are going to explore today. We're going to start the amphitheater. And today we have with us Richard, uh, drum roll, <laughs> Carmen's dad, <laughs> and Richard actually is a real historian, uh, a historical buff. So anyway, we're hoping that maybe he will share some of his knowledge with us on film, possibly. He hasn't agreed to that totally yet, so we'll let you know. But either we're working way, on it. Yeah, we're working but on let's, it. Let's just see what he's up to. Richard? I'm working on the historical perspective right now. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. So here we are in Merida, and we happen to be in the ruins of the amphitheater. And this is the amphitheater that housed, uh, or that could hold about 14,000 people at its peak. Uh, it was inaugurated in about 6 BC. Of course, the city of Merida was founded by Emperor Augustus back in 25 BC. It's kind of a retreat for the veterans of a couple of the uh, uh, Roman legions that fought in, in what we know as France and, and Spain now. But this area became the, the capital of the Western Roman Empire many years later. So what we have here is the, is the amphitheater behind us. It's elliptical uh, in shape. It's where uh, gladiators would fight, yes, and, and also, sorry, where the animals also met their end, unfortunately, to the entertainment of the Roman populace here. We have over on this side of me, you'll see those three arches. That's known as the uh, vomitoria. Uh, as uh, which would allow crowds to exit quickly. So we're all familiar with that term. Uh, that puts kind of a, a visual as to what it meant back in ancient times.
So now we're at the theater, the beautiful Roman theater. It's been, it's beautifully preserved. They originally started the excavation work in 1910, and then they started to refurbish and restore it uh, in 1964, and we see now how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. And they have live events here yeah. at night. And right. so, in addition to the live events, on the weekends, you're able to come here in the evenings, I think after seven o'clock, and, and see this place lit up. So we're planning a return trip where we can uh, enjoy the, the lights. Can you imagine like seeing an opera here? Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> Um, I think you'll find, as you look at the design, that uh, this is very similar to the way we do our common, uh, where, we, where we do our orchestras today, where you have the area for the orchestra. You have special design seating for, for politicians and nobility and so forth. You had ushers that made sure that those seating areas were uh, honored and preserved. Um, well, I was reading on one of these descriptions that even had seat fillers, so when a dignitary left a seat or wasn't there on time, there was somebody there to hold the seat for them. I mean, they do that for the Grammys now. So <laughs> these are principles that have applied from this point on. <laughs> Richard? We are, we are, <laughs> we, we are in Akazaba, which is a fortress mm -hmm. uh, built by the Moors back in the eighth century. And it was used to guard the city that formerly had been uh, Augusta Emerita, which uh, again was the ancient city that uh, Augustus Caesar built back in 25 BC for the veterans of, of the wars they fought in, in Europe. So again, we're moving back a number of centuries, 800 years forward to the 8th century where the Moors conquered Spain. They established this fortress here to control the city, which they renamed Merida, as we know today. Okay, I'll show you the inside because that's all I know is what to show you. I don't know the history. American terminology. But this is how they would guard because most of the and this is the entrance to the city so they could easily guard the city. It's now a footbridge. So evidently this is the cistern here located in the Akazaba fortress built by the Moors back in the 800s that uh, harvested uh, water from the Guadiana River right next to it here. Back in uh, Roman times there was a dam here and they would use the water behind the dam to uh, to uh, provide water for the city. Uh, so but in future times it was used militarily to uh, uh, for protection from, from future siege, potential siege in the future. In the year 1811, the English, which are allies of the Spanish, blew up the bridge over the river uh, uh, Guadiana. But despite this, Napoleon's French troops still managed to seize the Alcazaba, using on this occasion heavy iron cannonballs, cannonballs or ones full of shrapnel, which you see here are examples of what those cannonballs left from French troops uh, here at the, at the fortress. And then finally in 1936, during the Spanish Civil War, 
the uh, the fortress here was used by both factions, First Republic, and then the uh, and then the Franco forces. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> okay, I surrender. <laughs> okay, we are getting our historical review and really much much about measurements. But Carmen, At the Temple of Diana, and we've learned about the genius of the Senate and how much he loves to dance. Shake, 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 shake your, your booty. booty. <laughs> Sorry, I really apologize. <laughs> So we're having a lovely dinner of wine and cheese, pimentos, sardines, lots of good stuff. And talking about our day. Yeah. Yes. It was really cool. So if we have any words of advice, mine would be put Merida on your list. It was so nice to have those ruins accessible. I, I just felt like we were in the middle of it. I compare it to when we were in Arizona. When you go to the Grand Canyon, you are just looking from this you know, you feel so tiny and it's just so cavernous and huge. But when you're in Sedona, it's like you're in it and you can feel it. Well, that's how Merida was to me. Like, you were right there. You could walk the path and you could touch the stones and you could touch everything. And it just, it felt right. like you were, you were one of the residents. Right, so you could I, touch I loved it. everything, right? Right, yeah. Oh, what did you think of the day? I, I'm just really impressed with the ruins here because they're well preserved. Uh, given the number of places that, that we've been where we've seen ruins, this, uh, uh, these are have been restored, some of them to some degree, but they have been preserved um, very nicely for mm -hmm. us to really get a good picture. Right. I mean, the the amphitheater is absolutely amazing when you see the intricacy uh, of of what's there, and really can imagine the the grandiose aspects of empire out here, especially with the Romans, and you understand too the the effectiveness of the the imperial propaganda machine. Oh, that was so evident true. during those during those early centuries of right. Roman rule here in in what is now known as Spain. Back then it was Hispaniola, and uh, and this was one of the capital early capitals of uh, the Western Roman Empire. All right, and we only showed you a little bit. I, we didn't go. To, we didn't see everything, so um, we may return and and take you along with us. But um, you got a good glimpse of of what we felt was probably the best to see on a short trip. Yeah. And we've tried two different wines. Right. Both incredible. We're doing a tasting. So if you <laughs> see the two glasses, it's just a tasting. <laughs> right. And We're neither dependent. are bad. They're no. both delicious. They are. Well, well, this is a scientific study. <laughs> Very scientific. <laughs> yes. Right. Early research. This wine? I mean, the, the type of wine is... Um, when is Abla? No, no, the type of wine. Oh. Crianza? Crianza, it's a blend, blend, right? Yes, this one described it as a blend of... Uh-oh, I'm getting so old. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Syrah, Cab, and Tempranillo. And we likey. Okay. Mucho. Mucho. Mucho likey. <laughs> Mucho likey. 
So that's it for now, and we'll see you on our next episode, which we aren't sure what it'll be now or next, but ciao. Ciao.